Hi everyone, how are you doing today? You have been following along my Jekyll series. By this point you know enough to make a simple blog or portfolio website with a decent look. But you want more than that, don't you? Today we are going to talk about plugins that can be added to a Jekyll site. What kind of plugins are there, how to install and set up them. Generally speaking, plugins are there for you to extend Jekyll functionality. Overall you can split all plugins into four categories. Generators, converters, comments and tags. Let's talk about them one by one. As you can guess from the name, they generate additional content based on specified rules. These convert from other languages to HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Jekyll folks did a great job by including convert plugins for Markdown, SAS and CoffeeScript by default. But if you feel like using Hummel, Jade, TypeScript, Less, Stylus or something else, you can find a plugin that will suit your needs. Commons provides subcommons for Jekyll executable and tags will create custom tags. The difference will be self-generated values. The good news is you don't have to write your own plugins, as there are a lot of them written for you already. You can find a whole bunch of them on Jekyll website, GitHub or look through RubyGems. Ok, as we come across a plugin that does what we want, first thing we want to do is to install it. Jekyll offers you whole three options how to install a plugin. Let's install three plugins using each of these options. I have already found this cool plugin that will generate a sitemap for us. We will need the source code and save it in our plugins folder with any name as long as it has Ruby extension. Now as we restart Jekyll it will load these Ruby files before it will generate the website. If we take a look inside the site folder we can see a sitemap.xml file which means that our plugin does its job. Pretty simple right? Now let's use a second option and install a plugin that will tell us when the page was last modified. Let's find the plugin on RubyGems. Here we can copy the command to install the gem. Let's do it. To specify which plugins we want to use in our config file, we need to have a config option called gems and pass the plugin names in the array. Now we need to add the liquid tag to block page for each blog post and restart Jekyll. We can see that the date appeared underneath the post name, therefore our plugin is working. Now let's replace this plugin with something a little more useful. Remove this plugin as we won't need it. To use the last option we need to install Bundler. Bundler is a Ruby packet manager. You can learn more about it on bundler.io. Here we can copy the command to install it. Once Bundler is installed, we need to create a gem file in the root directory. Gem file describes the gem dependencies required to execute associated Ruby code, in our case Jekyll. Then create a group where we can specify our dependencies. Let's add our plugin called Jekyll Reading Time. It returns an approximate time you need to spend to read all text on a page. To install all dependencies that we have in our bundle, we need to run bundle install. Now we have a gem file.log, where we can find a list of all dependencies that we are using to generate our website. Let's insert a liquid tag with content and pass a filter reading time. Now if we try to run Jekyll, it will return an error, as we are missing red cloth. Jekyll needs it to compile our post in textile format. Let's add it to our bundle and repeat last two steps. Now we can see that we don't need much time to read all our posts. By this point you know how to extend Jekyll functionality by using plugins. Once again all the documentation and links to plugins I used will be in the description. If you have any questions or suggestions leave them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!